all of what he has done for us and to this great choir those that have stayed to praise the Lord today I want to give God all the praise and all the glory I do honor and respect to my friend and brother Pastor L.J. Como Sr. who uh, has graciously allowed us to worship together and build the kingdom of God Amen. together. We're thankful that we are in the house of the yes. Lord one more time. Yes. We're going to begin a series of messages, six messages dealing with miracles right. of the master. Right. And one of the messages that we will begin with is taken from Mark 5, 1 through 9. Mark 5, 1 through 9. The grass wither, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Mark 5, Matthew, Mark, 5th chapter, 1st verse, reading out of the New American Standard Bible, 1995. If you have it, say amen. amen. Still looking, say wait. Amen. They came to the other side of the sea and to the country of the Gerenses. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain. Because he had been often bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the other shackles broken in pieces, no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him and shouted with a loud voice, said, what business do we have with each other? Jesus, the son of the most high. I implore you by God, do not torment me. And he had been saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he said unto him, my name is Legion, for we are many. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Pastor Joseph needs your prayers. Pastor Joseph and your amens. Amen. Amen. Today's sermon topic is, Today's sermon topic is what, is your name? what is your name? What is your name? In order to paint the picture of what is going on in this particular uh, passage of scripture we have to know uh, that Jesus is coming from the other side and he launches he landed in the land of the Gadarenes as uh, C.L. Franklin would call it and he got out of the boat and when he gets out of the boat this gathering the not demonic makes a beeline for Jesus some of you uh, when you get the gas in the hood <laughs> And you fool around and make contact with somebody that may not be all the way right, they come straight. Yeah, yeah. They walk right to you. Yeah. And sometimes I say, oh, hold on, hold on, come too fast. <laughs> come too fast, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there are many people uh -huh, uh -huh. that are dealing with mental illness. And I want to make the distinction between mental illness and demonic possession. Yeah, yeah. There are people who have chemical imbalances in their brain. Uh, they have uh, different issues such as manic depressive, some people are depressed, some folk have uh, schizophrenia or uh, other issues or uh, manic, uh, manic uh, obsessive compulsive disorders. These are things where uh, people swing from a psychotic state to a neurotic state. And again, uh, long as you're swinging, we all become psychotic sometimes, we all become neurotic sometimes, but people who are mentally ill typically need therapy or medicine because they get stuck either in a neurotic state or a psychotic state. Neurotic, uh, 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 a neurotic state means 
it's nerve induced it's due to uh the nerves and the chemicals and then the psychotic state deals with the mind amen and a mental issue amen and so there are people again in mental illness that 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 are not a uh, demon possessed they are just mentally ill and we we have to do a better job of how we evaluate people dealing with mental illness amen and many people hide the mental illness because if they don't hide it they they won't they, they'll be disqualified for their job or their positions they're able to do some things do them uh, uh well but in many times again they have issues and sometimes they have what's called a psychotic break where they get uh so far out to where they are detached from reality but this is not the case this is the case in this particular uh, uh, passage of scripture that you have someone that the Bible says is possessed yes, yes. by demons. Uh -huh, uh -huh. In 1973, <laughs> the devil came to Hollywood in the form of the exorcist. All right, all right. And he did not left yet. <laughs> you got Freddy Krueger and everybody on, on Elm Street. Now Jason, ain't, Jason uh, on Halloween not going to ever die. Amen. They got Annabelle. They've got Chucky. they got the orphan. You, you, can't, you can't really go to the, to the movie without them having two or three at the same time of horror movies. And, and it's funny how every society may argue about God, but all of them uh, recognize the devil. I ain't traveling with me. And so what we find here today, this man, this man is among the tomb. Iron bars and chains could not hold him. He is weeping. He is gnashing. He's cutting himself. And he's, a, he, he's in a situation where he's by himself. Now guess what? There were two gathering demonics. But Jesus is fit, focusing on one who was the greater. Amen. Uh, sometime again they travel. People who are mentally ill tend to congregate together because other people don't understand. This man is mentally ill. Let me tell you, mental illness but demon, position, demon possession. This man is demon possessed. It is real. Had a chance to go to South Africa. Had a chance to go in Twilight. Zulu Natal, which is the Zulu portion of South Africa, and in many cases they still worship spirits and they still have bulls on and other stuff going on. And I went over there, and again we had a, a little thing that we had prepared that we've come from America to share with you the good news of God, and we're here to uh, uh, again to share with you who God is and that a God is special. And so we went to a couple of houses. And I was doing good, and then the last house we went to, I said, I haven't seen no demons over here yet, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And uh, my guy, Talani, said, Baba, they, they, the demons have been everywhere we went. They, they, we just took down the, the man at the last place. You didn't hear when I was translating that he took down his idols and his horns. And I'm, I'm confident, I'm walking in pride and arrogance. The next door we start knock on. I say we're here, and I, when I said Jesus, uh, the lady's eyes rolled back in the head. She began to speak in the little demonic tongue, and my and my and my God, he ran behind me, hiding. Tell my pray, Baba, pray. I said, oh, why you gonna pray me out? This, this your neighborhood. Why are you, why are you behind me telling me to pray? I just call, but you know, my, my theology, you know, what I know is that demons have no power over anything. The greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So I just begin, begin to say in the name of Jesus, yeah. and in the name of Jesus, and after about a minute of that, amen, that demon come down, was cast out, that lady then received Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Demons are real. Demons are fallen angels. So what happened is, uh, uh, in, in before time, Satan rebelled against God. One third of the angelic realm rebelled against God. Those are Satan, his demons, and different divisions, imps, and other things. Divisions of Satan. They are they are eternally cursed. They can never know the mercy 
and the love of God and the grace of God. They will never ever have an opportunity to be redeemed. They, they are, 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 are destined to be in hell for eternity. So when you see the dialogue, some people say that the demons came and worshipped him. What they really did is bow down to his authority. It's funny how uh, demons know more about God sometimes than we do. Demons bow and tremble before God. Amen. You know what demons even pray? Because the demon said to Jesus, uh, uh, just, 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 just don't take me out, put me somewhere. And so we find that again, this all of this is going on. Jesus uh, again is about to work with this man, but again the demons are in him, controlling him. And Jesus says to him, "What is your name?" Jesus says, "Come out of him, this unclean, unclean spirit." But he says, "What is?" Your name. They suggest to you, you've got to watch what 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 they call you. You got to watch what you allow people to call you. The reason why people call me Michael is because I will not answer to Mike. I will not answer to Mikey. I will not answer to Mickey. I will only answer to Mike. To Michael. I, if, if if you call me those other things, I'll just ignore you. Because again, that's not what my mama named me. Y'all not traveling. You've got to watch what they call you because people tend to try to define you in their own words and in their own terms rather than accept you for who you are. I have a friend that her name is Tyresha Lashon. And when I meet someone with a difficult name, I purposely, on purpose, try to get their name right. Rather than give them some cute name or a nickname or something that you call them, I try to take the time to learn how they say to pronunciate their name. Amen. And by doing so, I give, empower them that they are who they are. Amen. Many times what we want to do is that we want to uh, not take the time to learn who a person really is. And, and, and again, you've got to watch what people were trying to call you. There's some people right here today have some nicknames that the church don't know. Yes, you do. Because I, I go around your, your family reunion, I hang around you at the picnic, and all of a sudden, that nickname come out. Yeah, yes, it does. Yes, yes, it does. Everybody got some nickname. And guess what? You don't want people to call you that nickname because you, some of y'all got that nickname. Don't, don't, don't call me that. I had a friend, and, 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 and he, his name was 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 blank, but if I put something else in front of it, it, uh, it, it, it denoted something else. We've got to watch what they call you. Watch what you allow people to call you. Watch what you allow uh, 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 people to believe about yourself. They can call you a bad name, but that don't mean you have to respond to the bad name. They can say things about you. you we used to say sticks and thumb may uh, break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Old folk, I don't know these people who they say I've been bullied and I'm going to jump out of window because you talk bad to me. No, I, I believe we sung songs you can talk about me as much as you please because the more you talk I'm going to stay, stay on my knees I've been lied on, buked, scorned, talked about, sure as you're born, but long, long as a God King Jesus. Everything is going to be all right. We need to toughen up. Amen. We need to toughen up uh, with these labels and names and stuff that people try to put on you. Don't worry. It's not what our people call you, but it's what you answer to. Oh, my God. This man is dealing with many spirits inside of him. Uh, a legion. It might have been, uh, uh, again, up to 6,000 
uh, is a legion. The legion was over 6,000. And, and guess what? Uh, uh, people who are demon-possessed, the devil is pulling them in every which way. And, and then we see that aspect. Not only do you need to watch what they call you, you've got to watch what you call yourself. Amen. I had a young, young nephew who hung around with my cousin. And my cousin was a rapper. Uh, he loved rap. He, he, he drank and he smoked. And guess what? My little cousin hung around with him because did not have a real babysitter. And so guess what the little boy wanted to be? He wanted to be a rapper. He wanted to be like Big W. I'm not gonna call his name to win Sunnyside. And you you could figure out which one of my cousins it is. So. I'm not going to tell you who it is. You have to figure it out for yourself. And so, for years, he wanted to be a rapper. For, at, at two, he wanted to be a rapper. At three, he wanted to be a rapper. But at four, I, I, I met him and I, I said, what, what kind of rapper you want me to say? I'm not rapping no more. I go to Christian school now. All right, all right. And I'm not a rapper no more. I'm going to be something else. Because now he was in the Christian daycare. And he was no longer being called by his rap name. He wanted to be called his real name. Y'all not traveling. Sometimes we will allow people to put things on us that God never designed for us to be. Don't let people call you out your name. Amen. Don't you accept those uh, names. Um, again, you, you're not you're really not talking to me. If folks say certain things. I know they're not talking to me. Because they're not addressing me the way I need to be addressed. So I just ignore them. you got to be careful what you call yourself. This, Listen, listen. In verse 8, he is talking about what business do we have with each other. Jesus, son of the most high God, I implore you, do not torment me. Then Jesus says, come out of the man, you unclean spirits. So, Jesus was still communicating with the spirits in him and not the man himself. And many times what people are, are, are doing, they're trying to put their, their beliefs or their spirits on you. You've got to be careful what you listen to. You've got to be careful what you look at. The Bible describes Pharmacia is the same word they use for sorcery. All right, all right. So the same word that you use for drugs okay. is the same word that you use for sorcery. Oh. Many of the drugs that are on the market legal and illegal change the brain chemistry and how you view things. And you've got to be careful about illegal street drugs, especially marijuana. I say that because marijuana does dull your moral function. It impairs your ability to think. Amen. I know people might say you go to a good place, but guess what? You go and you don't come all the way back. Drugs are Satan's playground. And guess what? The number one drug is alcohol. Alcohol is the number one drug uh, again and again. Alcohol, marijuana, and these stair-step drugs uh, have a threshold that you have to take a little bit more and a little bit more. First, come on now. Yeah. Anybody ever you know, remember your first shot? All right. Burned, didn't it? All the way down. Yeah. It didn't taste good. Uh -huh. But now after you drank a few, you know, yeah. not, 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 now you're used to it. Yeah. Same way, same thing. I don't know anybody that took a, their first cigarette with. Amen. No, you took that first hit of that cigarette and almost choked to death. <laughs> Coughed your lung, part of your uh, bronchial tube, all out on the table. But after a while, it, 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 you get used to it. It numbs you. And it takes you somewhere you don't want to be. Watch out 
what you call yourself and you allow people to call you. You've got to watch out and understand who you are in Christ Jesus. And I don't care what the world or the enemy says you are. The Bible says greater than he that is in me than he that is in the world. We have power over demons. And let me tell you another thing. Stop playing with spirits if you're not real. Yeah, you That's right. In Acts 19, it speaks of uh, those people who would mimic Paul and wanted to act like they knew what they were doing. And that spirit says, well, hold on, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but I don't know you. And that spirit jumped on them and beat them and whipped them out. You've got to be careful, though. I, I don't play with Ouija boards. I'm sorry, I don't play with tarot cards. I don't I don't play with seances. I don't I, I don't really go to the devil pictures because they, they bore me because I know the demon don't have no power over me. So, so what I'm worried about it for you running and scared. I'm not scared of him because God has given me the power over the demon. But I don't need that, that trash in my mind. And so you got to be careful what you answer to and what you allow to come into your understanding. Oh, my dears, in, in the text we, we, we say watch what they call you, watch what you call yourself. But guess what? You've got to, you got to also be aware that Jesus can change what you're called by. Right. It is never said in the text what his real name is. It is never said in the text what Jesus called him after the, the, the demons came out of him. But what we do know is that after he had, uh, as C.L. Franklin said, met the altering personality of Jesus, yeah. uh -huh. that he was no longer the same. All right. And if you would be honest with you today, since you met Jesus, you are no longer the same. Amen. Is there anybody here to know that uh, the Lord has brought a change in my life and I'm not that way anymore. Some folk know they know what you, what you used to do, but again, God has uh, brought you out of it. And even some folk are struggling. You know, they're not all the way out. They got the right foot, right foot in, and the left foot out. And, oh, no, 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 I'm preaching. Yeah, yeah. They they they're still working with it. Still working with it. Jesus and God has the unique ability of redefining how. A person is looked at. In the Bible you will find. That God changes people's names. Based on. Uh, that he had been with them. And that they had experienced him. If you are true about yourself. Since you started this walk with the Lord. That there are some things. You used to be called by. That you are no longer be called by. There's some folk who were fighters. Yes they were. They, but now they do everything in their power. To keep from fighting. There's some folk that were some drinkers. I'm talking about some real drinkers. I mean, but now they do everything in their power to leave alcohol alone. There were some pe people who some cusses. And, 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 and guess what? You better not you better not push them too far. Because a, a couple of them words might come out, and that's the old Cajun lady saying, Now look, you didn't make me cuss if you keep on, I'm gonna cuss you. There's some people that have done some things, but Guess what? They have, they, they have experienced a change and a distance from who they are. They, they, amen. I, I love to look at people's picture books when I go to their house and the one they have on the table and I go back and I see, oh Lord, Lord have mercy, some of those uh, pictures of what we used to be. Come on now. You know, some of them pictures you got your drink on, you got your smoke on. So, some of those pictures, I, I didn't know you were that thin back in the day with your with your pearls on and you guess what miniskirts didn't just start y'all were wearing them in the 60s yes y'all were you know bumping and grinding didn't just start they were doing it in the 50s they were doing it in the 40s they were doing it in the 60s they hey amen oh, that's a shame y'all used to dance like that just not as, not as bad but, but it used to be out there like that so what we understand is that Jesus redefines who this man is is called by. I'm not dealing with whether the Gadarenes and putting them out and whether demons went. I'm dealing with the fact that when Jesus left, uh -huh. Uh -huh. this man says, Lord, I want to get on the boat with you. Right. Lord, I want to become a disciple. Okay. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Jesus forbid him to come with him. 
Because Jesus said you have a testimony. You have a testimony right here in your backyard. He said go home and tell your friends and family what good things the Lord has done for you. And guess what? There were ten cities. And the Bible reports, the history reports that these were the first people outside of Jews to receive the news about Jesus. Those ten cities came to faith because this gathering demonic went home. They saw how he used to be and they saw how he was now. May I suggest to you that if they people can't see a change in your life, you, you might not be on the right path. They ought to see you wiser, stronger, better. They ought to see the change in you. So folks say that this not that when I started preaching at the, the age of 12, there were two or three people came to church just to see if it was true. Because I would fight at the drop of a hat. It, it, didn't, it didn't matter if you was older than me. I, you, you just shouldn't have started it. You're know, you going you to have to beat me because, you know, I, I was taught not to back down I, again. And then I, I, I did not appreciate bullying. Amen. I did not appreciate bullying. So I figure I'm going to even up the odds. But when I met the Lord and began to become into preaching, I baptized at five, but I don't think I was saved at five. But I baptized so I could sing in the junior choir. You know, back in then, you couldn't sing with the junior choir if you weren't baptized. I, I, I got baptized so I could sing with the junior choir. We called it the Starlight Band. I wasn't even old enough to be in the junior choir. I was in the Starlight Band, five, six, seven, eight. You had to be nine to be in the junior choir. And so, again, but God began to change uh, uh, how I talk, how I, uh, certain adjectives that we shouldn't say, certain verbs, certain descriptions. We had found my father's uh, uh, records. They were Red Fox, Triple X, uh, Rudy Ray Moore, uh, and we had learned about Shine and the Signified Monkey. And we knew how to use explicatives and have them rhyme at the same time. And again, uh, we, we, I knew how. So guess what? It was not very many things you could say that I would not have a comment for. And again, I couldn't let mom and daddy know that I used those words, <laughs> but I, I did use them. Even so today, I have to smile. When people say funny stuff or crazy stuff to me, I just smile because I got something to say. I just, <coughs> I, I, I just don't want to say it. Hey, amen. But uh, it's a bad witness, but I, I, I got something to say. <laughs> so on that. But, but again, when, when the Lord began to deal with me, then I changed how I talk. I changed how I thought. I changed how I walk. And what is indicative is that now that he called him something else, but even if they said that was Legion, y'all not trapped with me. That was the man among the tomb. That was the man that had iron bonds. That was the man that had chains on. That was the man that, had, that, that was in the graveyard. And somebody would say, what happened to him? What happened to him? He looked like he got some sense. He got his clothes on. He don't have no chains. He's not hollering. He's not crazy anymore. Well, let me tell you what happened. He met a man named Jesus. <laughs> he met a man named Jesus who got off the boat specifically in the graveyard to meet him. And, and he ran to Jesus. And Jesus had a conversation with him and the demons at the same time. And now he walks and talks like he's been with Jesus. Anybody here that, that, that I walk different because I've been with the Lord. I talk different because I've been with the Lord. I, I think different because I've been with the Lord. I don't drink what I used to drink because I've been with the Lord. I don't smoke what I used to smoke because I've been with the Lord. If you are a child of God and you have not changed, and then you may not really have been with Jesus. C.L. Franklin says it is the altering personality of Jesus that when you are with Jesus, when you have known him, when you have come and sucked with him, when you have died with him, when he becomes your Lord 
and save it. It changes how you walk. It changes how you talk. It changes how you live. It changes how you give. It changes what you are and how you respond to this world. If you've been with him, you ought to show some signs. Forgive me of the Christian that says they know the Lord and, and that God is their son Lord and so they always say he's my savior but he got he must be Lord. Uh -huh. yeah. This gathering demonic went home and told his friends uh -huh. yeah. Jesus. You know Jesus he died on the cross and he said and rose from the grave Jesus but also the Jesus that walks with you yes. the Jesus that empowers you yes. the Jesus that heals you uh -huh. the Jesus that helps you Bear the burden that you bear. Sometimes we bear the burden all by ourselves. Sometimes we need to give the Jesus, give him the load. Give him the heavy part. I, I, look, I, I, they get on my last third. So Lord, I know you said I got to forgive them. So I'm going to forgive them because you said forgive them. I'm going to love them because you said love them. I'm going to speak good to them because you said love them. I'm going to pray for them because you said pray for them. Because you know what I really want to do is but Jesus, what is your name? Can people identify you as a believer or are you a secret agent Christian? They never know you as a Christian until they showed up on Sunday. Jesus said to us, what do you want to be called by? Do you want to be a sinner? Do you want to be a saint? I want to be a saved sinner who's working on being a saint. What is your name? The door is open. There might be one by letter, Christian experience. If you know someone who is truly unsaved, pray for them that God would save their soul. You know someone that's mentally, mentally ill, try to help get them some professional help. Professional help. Because as, as believers, we need to do better in dealing with those who are mentally ill. But if you know someone that is actually under the influence of spirits that are destroying them, spirits that are vexing them, spirits that are keeping them back, pray for God to, to deal with that, that those spirits will go away, that they'll be exercised, that they'll be banished. If, you, if you're not strong enough, there are some prayer warriors that are strong enough. There are some people who, who battled these spirits before, who know what to say, who know how to do, who know how to deal with it. Find us and we will help you with that. Because so many people are being influenced by the evil one. And it's time, it's time to let those spirits go. The spirits have you today, you're on this broadcast. Reach out to us, reach out to us. You can, don't have to remain in the state you're in. The Father wants to redeem you and put you back together again. Is that one? The door is open. God is calling. He wants a relationship with you through His Son, Jesus Christ. He wants to heal what the devil's messed up. But the canker worm is eating away and the locust has tried to eat up. The Lord wants to restore. He wants to regulate your mind. I don't say he is a mind regulator. A heart fix. You hear today what you come. I was to extend. You want to accept all of you.
a name is made of friendship. Sister Kayla loves and watches over my little granddaughter. She she gonna remember Kayla for the rest of her life. But that was my really first big sister. Amen. Amen. That I talk to and she understands me even better than my mother and dad. Amen. Amen. That's what she think. That's the one. Amen. As life goes on, Amen. you remember those who were good to you. Amen. And I thank God for this sermon because this man had a problem. He was in the graveyard. <laughs> and somebody in the graveyard cutting up yourself and going through changes. People don't even want to come around you and socialize with you. And Jesus comes along and he changed all of that. Now somebody want to talk to him. Somebody want to know about his experience. And that's what God does to us. He'll change your whole life. Somebody will want to talk to you. Somebody will want to make a joke. We thank God for that. Amen. We thank God for those who still respect our program and our sharing our program. For those who give through Venmo at Fiesta Dash Church. Thank you so much for all your giving the experience. You uphold and bless the church in a very special way. We are praying <clears throat> for the families and our prayer list is here. Pastor L.J. Coleman's family, Pastor Michael Joseph's family, Deacons and family, Sister Beverly Lewis and family, Dana Williams and family, Sister Tiffany Coleman family, Deacon Grady Reed and family, Mother and Sister Van Rucker and family, Sister Rita Van, we surely pray for her. I think she's still going through so much. Sister Lois Joseph, and we pray for our elders at the age that we learn to love and share some kind of love with them. Sometimes just temporary, just once every now and then. You call them and let them know you care. You should send them a call. Amen. You just let them know, I know you're still there. And we still love you. Because uh, I can't forget those of the Sister Van, Sister Joseph, Sister Colvin. Uh, beautiful people. <coughs> uh, many of you in the church here, uh, things can happen. I can never forget because you were a special part of this church. Uh, Sister Charlene Rose, uh, Sister Bill, uh, Brother Milton McDaniel, Brother Lawrence and Dennis Chenier. Charles Armstrong. You know, I don't want to go back to Brother Lawrence and uh, Leather Schneer. Brother Lawrence lost his brother the other day. And we had a special setting that we sent them something from the church and from the Como family. And let me tell you something, Mother. Even though they're on the north side and they're going to another church, they, they can never forget the Como family and the families of this church Amen. that was so kind of them. They sent us, let us know. He cried when he received what we sent him in response to his brother's death. And it's just like, hey, I have somebody else here. That's a beautiful situation, and I'm thanking for that. Brother Charles Armstrong, which is Mrs. Tiffany's father, we're praying for him, uh, that God bless him and give him stronger. Sister Shaletta Williams, uh, Sister Mazetta White, Sister Coleman, Sister Aunt Morris, Sister Jackie Spratley, Brother Bruce Horn, Pastor Gerald Dew, he's way in Chicago, pastoring a great and wonderful church called Fire here a while back. But he's doing better now, we thank God. And the family, Sister Wilma DeBose, Sister Martha King and family, family Adrian Booker, <coughs> Sister Dan, Damari Lewis, and family, DeAndre Jefferson and family, Fiesta and Marvelous Light Church. The two churches that combined to make a difference for the Lord. And I believe we are making that difference. Thank you so much for being a part of that. Anything I forgot, please help me. Brother, Brother Zachary Spears, I think we just forgot to put a voice down at the bottom. Brother Zachary Spears and Sister Spears' uh, brother, yes, want to pray with and for him as he goes through his trials. Amen. Nobody is exempt from going through trials. Amen. No matter how great a saint you are, Amen. nobody is Amen. exempt from going through trials. What is your name? My father told me, I'm sure some of you had some fathers, they told you some things, to respect your name, respect your family. Many of my family, when our mother got older, my dad, well, of course, we, Sister Coleman had a situation because her dad was sick by the same time my dad was sick. When she was traveling to Dallas, I'm traveling to Lake Charles, and we sometimes split up. Sometimes we go together, sometimes we travel both places. And they said, Why are you doing this? Because they're older now. They can't do it. And whatever they need, I believe God gave them, I believe God did give me my family. And I'm going to do the best I can to the last minute when I can't do no more. My mother stayed with me on her last few days, laying down, and she couldn't talk no more. And I just go by and kiss her, and I read a scripture to her, tell her I love her. I share with my brother and sister, y'all come on over here and tell mama you love her, because we know time is winding down. 
If you have parents, love them and respect them. If you have a spouse, love them and respect them. And God will bless you. Amen? Amen. What is your name? I don't think I can ever forget that, Pastor Joseph. Thank you so much. Final word. Yesterday we laid to rest, uh, had a little pleasure uh, to be my actual second cousin. And it was a delight to see my family. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a group of cousins on the north side, and everybody else is on the south side. But don't get life twisted, man. We, we all related. But it was such a joy to hear them talk about my Aunt Vita. Vita Hager and her prayer meetings. I'll tell you about the ones on the south side, you know, because I used to go to Mont Vera and uh, Dean and Joy and Georgia. Uh, I mean, Betty, all of them would go to prayer meetings. But it was such a joy to hear that while we were doing it on the south side, they were having prayer meetings on the north side. And, and again, we, 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 had to, we had to almost have church on Friday. Two, three of y'all that make y'all the junior choir. Yeah, they would. They, you know, old folk would do that to you. And afterwards, we would sit and eat and fellowship. But those days of forming who we were helped us when we got older. Because we heard things like, I'm a running, I'm a running, I'm trying to make 199 and a half more days. You'd hear the determination of he would tell that testimony determined to run all the way. Amen. And you would you would you you would hear the saints. They they wouldn't pretty up the prayer. They just prayed just like it was. Like and you'd know that somebody was dealing with something. And you know, it didn't gossip neither. We we prayed with them. And I'm glad, I'm glad that I had a religious foundation, a Christian foundation by believers in Jesus Christ. Now my dad was still doing his thing, but, but that he couldn't be what the law was doing with me. And so I thank God for, uh, amen, my aunt and her granddaughter, Tamara Pleasant, uh, but the life of Vita Hager is in me. And I thank God for her, and we wanna pray for the Pleasant family as they uh, deal with their loss. Let us pray, Father God, you know my name. You've called me out of the darkness into the marvelous light. But Lord, you're still calling others. Whosoever will, let them come. Whoever bid them come. Lord, we pray, God, that to those that you're calling, that they will hear your voice. Father, we pray that as we go, Lord, we will have such a change and they will say, isn't that who used to be this. And when they asked us how we made it, let us not lean on our pedigree, our education, or our pastor, our church. Let us say there's nobody but the Lord. Bless those who are bereaved today. Bless those who are struggling today mentally that need, oh God, some medical and chemical help. But Lord, we also pray against those who are of battling spirits who are not saved because it is impossible for a saved person to be demonically possessed because the spirit of God is greater than the spirit of others. But, but Lord, it's possible, Lord, that we can be oppressed. And Lord, we pray for those who are oppressed and those that are possessed. That they would come face to face with the real Jesus who can make them whole. In the matchless name of our Savior, we pray. Amen.